All right, are we all, can we hear me? Perfect, all right. All right, I have a question for each and every one of you. Raise your hand if you've ever been on a path before. Wow, dude, look at that, so many hands. Today we are gonna be addressing a path that can better environmental education. We're gonna be talking about different elements that can help with environmental education. Through those elements, I'm gonna be addressing a baseline. So what is environmental education and why does it matter in the first place? Well, environmental education can help kids make better connections later on in the classroom. But through this, we need to make sure that they're able to have wonderment and be able to explore and play and create all within those realms. And to do this and find out all my answers to my research, I got to intern at Islandwood and teach third and fourth graders about environmental education. Through doing that, they did, they listened to stories, they played in the woods, and obviously they watered some plants. So that brought me to my question is, what are the elements of effective environmental education. So I had a very narrow point of view going into this internship where I was just wanting to compare a game and a craft. And to do that, I thought, well, how am I going to do that? What is going to come of that? But in order to do that, I had to be able to have a space to do it in. And I got to play in a large playground for six weeks that had two tree houses, a suspension bridge, and a pond, a bog, and a marsh. Anyone working in environmental education, that sounds like a dream. So in order to do that, I taught three different environmental education curriculums. There was farm and garden, junior naturalist, and wild discovery. But to do that, they had to have a the a different themes, but they also had a game and a craft that I compared that I discussed earlier. I had a game and a craft for each different curriculum that, would, that had the same learning objectives and goals in order to compare the two. So in order to do that, I needed to make sure that they had the same outlines to do so. And in order to collect my data, I made a spreadsheet that entailed the, different, the differences in how kids interacted with one another, their total time spent, their body language, if they were po like positively interacting with one another, or were they being rude to one another? And also, I got to create my own curriculum while I was working at Islandwood this summer and I got to monitor that curriculum. The goal of this curriculum was for the farm and garden. I had, the goal was for children to be able to connect better with gardens and create their own farm. So that brought me to those five elements that we discussed when Sean was introducing me, which was teamwork, connection, autonomy, play, and create. So with these five elements, I truly believe that we can have a stronger baseline in environmental education. And I found these through monitoring the body language of 54 different campers throughout the six week span of camp. As you can see, kids were smiling 19% of the time while doing a craft, but oh, they were smiling 32.6% of the time while they were doing a game. Was this because they were moving around? But you also need to notice that the, about the same percent were focused while doing both, but more had different forms of distraction while playing a game. We need to consider how and why? Is this because of these five elements? Maybe, but we need to remember that we have to have flexible education systems for each child. And with these five elements, we can ensure that children will have better connection, be longer, be more engaged for a longer period of time. And I was able to monitor the total time spent for children with longer engagement and they were able to be longer engaged when they were working together, which ties back to those five key elements that I have been discussing with teamwork. Having that creative outlet and being able to work with one another and play, you can clearly see that kids like working together, but we need to be able to allow them to do that. And to do so, we need to make sure that we are giving them that time. In these images, it is clear that children love to have their own pieces of paper, which allows them to have their autonomy that they need. And in doing so, we are allowing them to collaborate, talk about their ideas, and make sure that they can ensure that path to having a better time while they're doing that game or craft. So who would you like to walk that path with? The five key elements? I for sure would. I want to make sure that all educators are able to have those five key elements while they're teaching. So these are some silly songs, right? I had some campers make these silly songs after we had a long debrief about every single thing that we learned during the week. That shows connection. Children are making a connection through a creative outlet after talking with one another. So 
four minutes and 30 seconds ago, I asked you a question, right? You haven't even been on a path. Now I ask you, please implement those five key elements into your path next time you're on it. I would like to thank my host organization, I Lewin, my site supervisor, Amanda Hip, my faculty advisor, Eli Wheat, my co-lead, Emma Bellinger, who's here, and my capstone cohort, all of my lovely friends and family, and of course, my silly campers. Thank you. All right. Yeah. <laughs> so she asked the question um what like methodology i preferred and like what curriculum i prefer teaching over the summer um so funny enough i actually taught the farm and garden theme curriculum three times this summer um compared to junior naturalist and wild discovery. That just happened to be what was the most popular with um, the folks living on island and what my site supervisor had um, put into the system before I had even planned it. Um, as you guys know, I love farming, so <laughs> I'm a little biased. And obviously I got to create a curriculum that was about farming. Um, so that was definitely my favorite one. And the implementation of play and create really came into effect when I was making that curriculum because the children got to be outside and then come inside. So they were pretty low energy. And I think that educators need to start implementing getting wiggles out before going into classrooms more. I know we have recess, but I think that you can consider teaching outside more, especially in the Pacific Northwest when it isn't raining. I think that we should be outside when it is feasible and we're not giving out exams. <laughs> One more question. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so the question was if I've looked into urban environments and how the accessibility for them versus Islandwood, which is 250 acres of an outdoor playground. Um, so I personally didn't look into that too much. Um, I know that Caitlin, who has a lovely poster outside, looked into accessibility for environmental education, um, looked into that for her research. The lovely thing about Islandwood is that they have a school overnight program for King County and they have fifth graders that come there for a week and they get taught by grad students and staff that work there. So they like offer that opportunity. I didn't work with that with that whole group because I was working at the summer camp. Um, but for kids that are working in like that are living in the city and don't have like a green space, I think that Having opportunities and curriculums, just like the one that I created, it's super feasible to like go to a community garden. Like if you're in Beacon Hill and you can go on a little field trip to Beacon Hill Food Forest, you can totally make do with that curriculum that I created. It's just about having the resources for your regular school teacher to be able to implement an easy curriculum that's clearly laid out. Thank you so much for that question. Great.